This video topic was requested by my patron, Nikki Marie. If you would like to become a patron and have your video topic requests prioritized, link down below. That means if vampires in this roleplay work differently than what you're used to when it comes to playing your vampire character, you're going to make those adjustments and you're going to be okay with it. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about adapting your character to an alternate universe. So, you found a cool new roleplay group, or maybe your friend came to you with a new idea for a setting or a plot for your ship. Either way, now you've realized that you need to take this character that you've played a few times before and adapt them into a new world, into a new plot. This can be great for keeping interest in a character that you really love. Maybe this character, you're playing them in a storyline, but you're kind of getting bored with that storyline, or maybe they recently got killed off, or maybe you want to have multiple stories going with them at once because you just love them so much. Either way, now you have to take that character and adapt them into an alternate universe. And I'm gonna give you five easy steps on how to do that. The first thing that you need to do when adapting your character first is to familiarize yourself with the setting and with the plot that you're going to be adapting them into. And depending on exactly what the situation is, the process for this might look a little bit different. If this is just something that you're doing with your ship partner, then the answer is to have a conversation with them. Talk about what you want for the plot, what you want for the setting, what kinds of tropes you want to use, all of those things that go into a normal plotting conversation. And I made a whole video about how to plot and how to have that conversation, which I will make sure to link up in the card for you guys. So I would recommend to go check that out if that's your situation. If this is a new group roleplay that you're joining, my advice is to read the lore book. Read everything that they provided you that you can consume before joining the roleplay. So that includes the rules, that includes all the stuff about the setting, that includes the bios of the existing characters, everything that is available for you, read it. And after you've finished reading it, if you have any questions about anything that you've read, go ahead and ask them because you're gonna be using this information for all of the next steps that we're gonna go through. So it's really important to make sure that you have a clear understanding of how that role play works. All right, so now that you have all of this information kind of floating around in the back of your head, we're gonna to move to step number two. Analyze what you like about your character. Is it certain personality traits that they have? Is it a certain trope that they fit really well into? Is it the way they look? What exactly is it that draws you to this character? If you haven't done this before, this is going to take a little bit of time and self-reflection about what you really like about that character, and you're going to have to be honest with yourself. But the good news is, there are no right answers to this question. However, there are a few wrong ones, so let's go over those. If you're saying to yourself, well, I don't know what I like about this character, well, then you're not done with this step. Keep going. You've got to answer this question to move through the process. If you're saying to yourself the answer is everything, I like everything about my character, well, then we can't adapt that character to an alternate universe because the setting is going to change your character slightly. So you really need to consider, is that actually the answer? If it is, then I would recommend making a new character for this roleplay instead of trying to adapt. And that brings us to step number three. Be okay with changes. There is a lot that goes into what makes a person behave and think the way that they behave and think, and that's true for characters as well. A character's circumstances and environment will play into their personality, the choices that they make, and how they react to various situations. So that means when adapting a character to an AU, you've got to be okay with changes to that character. If you're not, like I said just a minute ago, I would recommend making a new character instead of trying to adapt. Some role players do this regularly. They'll make a new character for every new role play because they feel this way. And that's totally valid. You don't have to do AUs. Personally, I really like doing them because I get really attached to my characters and I want to play them over and over again in new settings and retell their stories and tell new stories with them and all sorts of things like that. But not all role, role players feel that way. So once you have decided that you're okay with making changes to that character, we can proceed to step number four, which is to write their bio. 
This bio is going to do a few things. Now, remember, you have already familiarized yourself with the plot and setting that you're about to adapt to, and you've analyzed what you care about when it comes to your character. So what you're going to do is take these two pieces of information, and you're going to sort of reverse engineer a bio that gets that character to where they need to be at the start of the roleplay. It may take a few revisions the first time you do this, so don't be afraid to ask for help from either your ship partner if you're in that situation, or from the person running the roleplay if you're joining a roleplay group. Mods of most roleplays are more than happy to help you out with this and help you get to a place where you're satisfied and you have a character that can be accepted into the roleplay. I know in my roleplays, if someone has a clear idea of what they want to do, we will help them figure out how to make that work, or if there's not a way to, we will explain to them why. Also remember, you've decided you're okay with change. That means if vampires in this roleplay work differently than what you're used to when it comes to playing your vampire character, you're gonna make those adjustments and you're gonna be okay with it. You're not gonna say, well, my vampire character is a Dompier, however you say that word, from Pathfinder, and I know this isn't a Pathfinder game, but you're gonna bend to me, right? Like, no, you're not gonna say that. You're gonna say, oh, I understand vampires do this, this, and this in this roleplay, so my vampire now does this, this, and this, and has these powers instead. Alright, so you have written your bio, you've got it into a place you're basically happy with, and now we're going to go to the final step number five, which is review the other bios for the characters in the roleplay again. This is a step you only really need to do for group roleplays, so if you're roleplaying with just like your ship partner or a tiny group of friends, you can go ahead and skip this step, you're, you're done, you've gotten everything that you need out of this video. But if you're joining a group roleplay, stay for just a few more minutes and let's talk about this step. So at this point, you have all these thoughts swimming around in your head, you understand the setting, you understand what you like about your character, you've got a bio that you're basically happy with. It's going to feel like you're done, but not quite. You're going to go back through the bios in the roleplay group again, and the reason why you're doing this is to make sure that your character doesn't fill a niche that's already filled in the roleplay. Remember from my Axioms of Roleplay video, everyone wants to feel special. You don't want to be playing a character that's essentially the same thing as a character that's already established in the roleplay group. If you find out that your character is basically the same as another character, this means you're going to need to tweak a few things in regard to your bio. But that's okay, because you know exactly what you like about your character, and you're also okay with change, so you'll know where to make those changes. And then, once you've done that, you can go ahead and submit that bio to the people running the roleplay for approval, just like you normally would when you're submitting to a new roleplay. And then, you're done! You have an alternate universe version of your character now. So, to recap, there are five steps in this process, and they go in this order. The first step is familiarize yourself with the new setting and plot. Then, analyze what draws you to your character in particular. Third, be okay with changes. And once you've internalized that, then write a new bio that still supports what you like about your character, as well as fits into the new setting and plot. Then lastly, what you're going to do is make sure this character is different from what's already represented in the roleplay. Alright, so those are my five steps. I love AUs. Do you love AUs like I do? If you do, do you go through something similar when you're kind of taking your character and adapting them? If you do something different, I would love to hear about your process down below. If this isn't something that you've done before, are you going to try these steps? If you do, let me know how it goes. And of course, don't forget to make it a great day. Hey y'all, Karen from the future here with a small announcement. I have started streaming on Twitch. If you are interested in learning a little bit more deep dive stuff about some of my roleplay opinions, or if you have questions for me, please join me on twitch.tv slash itscarenterry. Every Saturday Eastern time from noon to two.